Good morning, everyone. My name is Harry Bain, and I'm the president of Good Samaritan Medical Center. It's my honor and privilege to introduce and welcome His Eminence, Cardinal O'Malley, with us here today for this joyous and momentous celebration as we celebrate the 50th anniversary of our medical center. Your Eminence, thank you so much for being here. Thank you very much, Harry. And now, my brothers and sisters, let us prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries by calling to mind our sins and asking for God's mercy and forgiveness. <laughs> A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to all the people, saying, A prophet like me will the Lord your God raise up for you from among your own kin. To him you shall listen. This is exactly what you requested of the Lord your God at Horeb on the day of the assembly when you said, Let us not again hear the voice of the Lord our God, nor see this great fire any more, lest we die. And the Lord said to me, this was well said. I will raise up from them a prophet like you from among their kin and will put my words into his mouth. He shall tell them all that I command him. Whoever will not listen to my words, which he speaks in my name, I myself will make him answer for it. But if a prophet presumes to speak in my name an oracle that I have not commanded him to speak or speaks in the name of other gods, he shall die. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. I should like you to be free of anxieties, and I am telling you this for your own benefit, not to impose restraint upon you, but for the sake of propriety and adherence to the Lord without distraction. The one who stands firm in his resolve, however, who is not under compulsion, but has power over his own will, is doing well. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Then they came to Capernaum, and on the Sabbath, Jesus entered the synagogue and taught. The people were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. In their synagogue was a man with an unclean spirit, He cried out, What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him and said, Quiet, come out of him. And the unclean spirit convulsed him, and with a loud cry came out of him. And all were amazed and asked one another, what is this? A new teaching with authority? He commands even unclean spirits and they obey him? His fame spread everywhere throughout the whole region of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning, everyone. Dr. Bain, Father Richard, Jerry Paciello, staff, friends of Good Samaritan, and especially our patients who are in their rooms participating with us by the miracle of television. It's a great joy to be here today to celebrate this 50th anniversary of Good Samaritan Hospital. I often tell people that my whole life could be going around celebrating 50th anniversaries of things that Cardinal Cushing started. (laughs) As a matter of fact, this week I've been in Peru to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the foundation of the St. James Missionary Society that Cardinal Cushing started 60 years ago 
And in the last 60 years, we have sent 300 priests from Boston to work in Peru, Bolivia, and Ecuador in some of the poorest parishes in those countries. And it was a great joy to be a part of that. A year or so ago, I was invited to Galway to rededicate the cathedral there, which was also built by Cardinal Cushing. I was very fascinated, and I thought, why did Cardinal Cushing build a church in Galway? Until I got to Galway and realized that every single person in Galway has a relative in Boston. It's amazing. <laughs> it is amazing. But today we're here to commemorate that 50 years ago, this month, Cardinal Cushing dedicated this chapel and the wonderful ministry of Catholic health care began here at Good Samaritan Hospital. Cardinal Martini uh, was formerly the Archbishop of Milan, a wonderful scripture scholar, has written a beautiful book called How Jesus Managed His Time. He studied the four gospels and distilled out of those gospels all of the things that Jesus did, how he used his time, and he came up with six priorities. Uh, the first two priorities are seen in today's gospel. The first one being works of mercy and care for the sick, first priority of Jesus. And the second priority, announcing the good news, the gospel, proclaiming the kingdom. I guess if someone had asked me, I would have thought that proclaiming the kingdom was the first priority. But when you look closely at the Gospels, you see that Jesus' first priority was really about mercy, taking care of the sick, feeding those who were hungry. Because it's in the context of mercy that the Gospel and the announcement of the kingdom can be made. So for 2,000 years, Following the example of Jesus, the church has been involved in health care. Many of our saints dedicated themselves to hospitals and taking care of the sick. Mother Teresa was discovered by the BBC, Malcolm Muggeridge, because she was seen pushing a wheelbarrow with a dying man covered with maggots in the streets of Del Calcutta and taking him to an abandoned Hindu temple so that he could die surrounded by love. St. Francis, the founder of my own community, his very first ministry was taking care of lepers. And so for 2,000 years, the church has been involved in care for the sick as part of the way that we proclaim that the kingdom of God is here, that God's love and mercy must be visible in the lives of his disciples. Today's gospel depicts Jesus on the Sabbath in the synagogue at Capernaum. The Sabbath, of course, is the Lord's day. For us, today is the Sabbath. And we gather in our synagogue, in this chapel, to worship God, to reflect on His Word, and to ask for His blessing. When I was the bishop in the West Indies, in our diocese, we had the oldest synagogue in the Western Hemisphere. It was an old Sephardic Jewish temple built over 500 years ago, white sand on the floor. And one day the rabbi gave me a tour. And as I went around the synagogue, I picked up an old prayer book and it opened to the prayer, more than Israel has kept the Sabbath, the Sabbath has kept Israel. In many ways, we of the new covenant can say the same. More than we've kept the Sunday Mass obligation, it has kept us a people. It has kept us focused on God. It has kept, given us a sense of being a community as we come together to worship and to support each other in our faith. So in today's gospel, Jesus is 
at the Sabbath and in the synagogue in Capernaum. A few years ago, we had a retreat for the Boston priest in the Holy Land. And to me, one of the most moving experiences was when we all went to this synagogue in Capernaum. Jesus exercised much of his ministry in Capernaum. He spent the first 30 years of his life in relative obscurity, working in the carpenter shop in Nazareth. But when he began his public ministry, so much of it took place in the town of Capernaum. And it's this synagogue that was built by the centurion who, although he was a pagan, was very friendly to the Jewish people. And he went to Jesus and told him that his servant was sick. And Jesus says, I will come and take care of him and cure him. And he says, I'm not worthy that you come under my roof. Say but the word and he will be healed. Those are the words that we repeat at mass every day. Well, they're from the centurion who helped build this synagogue that we heard about in today's gospel. It was there that Jairus' daughter was raised from the dead by Jesus. So many sick were healed there. And it was there that Jesus gives his magnificent Eucharistic discourse. I am the bread of life come down from heaven. Unless you eat of my body and drink of my blood, you will not have life in you. That discourse was given in this very synagogue. And right down the street from the synagogue was St. Peter's house, which was sort of the Vatican of the first generation of Christians. It was there that everyone gathered with Jesus and the apostles. And it was the venue of so many miracles. This year, we are listening to Mark's gospel on Sunday. And Mark's gospel stresses Jesus' miracles, particularly the healing ministry of Jesus. The gospel is all about Jesus showing us the merciful face of the Father. And I'm sure for that reason, Cardinal Cushing chose Good Samaritan as a very fitting name for this institution, for this hospital. I often share with people that when I was in Washington for 20 years, one of the things that I looked forward to every year was when the Washington Post would award a prize to the person who got the most parking tickets during that year. <laughs> and it was always the same person, the Russian ambassador. <laughs> Of course, it was the height of the Cold War, and Washington's finest always had an eye on uh, the Russian ambassador's car, anxious to put a ticket on it. Of course, as a diplomat, he never had to pay those tickets. But the story of the Good Samaritan is about the Cold War that was taking place at the time of Jesus. It wasn't between Russians and Americans, it was between Samaritans and the Jewish people. There was a lot of animosity. And so in this wonderful story of the Good Samaritan, which is a response to a lawyer's question, the lawyer asked, what is the most important commandment of all? Well, lawyers usually don't ask a question unless they know what the answer is going to be. They don't like surprises. Now, at the time of Jesus, they had over 600 commandments in the Old Testament. And most people at that time would have said that the most important commandment was really the Sabbath observance. Because if you're observing the Sabbath, then you're going to find the strength to live the other 600 uh, commandments. So it was quite a surprise when Jesus answers by saying, oh no, the most important commandment is loving God above all else and loving your neighbor as yourself. He puts the two as one commandment. And then of course, the lawyer, trying to look intelligent, asks another question, who is my neighbor? And of course, once again, I'm sure he thought that 
Jesus was going to say, well, all of the people that root for the Red Sox or the people who belong to the same country club or belong to your same synagogue or are the same ethnic group. But instead, Jesus pulls this character out of the air who symbolizes that tension of the Cold War in his day, the Good Samaritan. Now the Jewish priests and Levite came by, they saw the man by the side of the road, and they didn't go over to help him, perhaps because they had to go to the temple. They were in Jericho on the way to Jerusalem, and they didn't want to incur uh, ritual impurity by touching a corpse. They would not have been able to, to perform their duties in the temple. But they didn't even go over to check and see whether he was dead or alive. On the other hand, when this foreigner who belongs to another religion, another ethnic group, someone who is not particularly liked, is moved to pity and goes over and takes care of this man. He is the stranger and the foreigner who becomes the neighbor, becomes a brother to the person who is suffering. And this is what Catholic healthcare has always been about, responding with mercy to a person who is a neighbor, a friend, a brother and sister. It's about caring for the whole person based on our understanding of our connectedness with God and with one another. The church has thousands of hospitals in the world. And as I said, the lives of the saints show how many of them were involved in hospital ministry. St. Luke, the writer of one of the Gospels, was himself a physician. And Jesus in the Gospel is called the Divine Physician. Today, for many, health care is becoming an industry. It's all about the bottom line. But for us, it's a ministry. It needs to be patient-centered, recognizing the dignity of each and every human being, an irrepeatable mystery, a child of God, made in the image and the likeness of the Creator. I always love that scene from the, in the film of the story of Father Flanagan, the founder of Boys Town, where he sees this orphan carrying a lad on his back. And he says, oh, he's too heavy. And he says, oh, no, Father, he's not heavy. He's my brother. We live at a time when too often people are seen as a burden. An unwanted child, a person with Alzheimer's. They were bragging in one country that they didn't have any more Down syndrome children, not because they found a cure, but because they're aborting them all. And of course, there's great push to execute those who are sick and at the end of life. But for us, no one can be a burden. We are here to take care of one another. To be like that stranger, that foreigner on the road to Jericho who is moved to compassion by the suffering of another. They tell the wonderful story, and I don't know whether it's true or not, but of a British aristocrat who was on the way to a very important session of Parliament, and his car got mired in the mud, and he was desperate. And suddenly, this Scottish farm boy appeared with the yoke of oxen, pulled his car out of the mud. He was so grateful because it was going to allow him to be there at this crucial vote. So he said to the young man, I want to reward you for your kindness. He said, it's not necessary. He said, certainly you have some dream. He said, oh yes. He said, I always wanted to be a doctor. But he said, I'm only a poor farm boy. That'll, that's not in the cards. 
Well, when that aristocrat got back to London, he arranged for that lad to get a scholarship. And he went to the best schools. And he became a doctor. Years later, during the Second World War, when Winston Churchill was dying of influenza, he was saved by a miracle drug, penicillin, that had been invented by the Scottish farm boy, Dr. Fleming, who received a scholarship from Winston Churchill's dad, Lord Churchill. A couple of years ago, I was at a wake of a doctor who had worked for many years at St. Elizabeth's. And his family told me how when he was dying, he was cared for by this wonderful nurse who I actually met at the wake. And she told me that when she was born, she was born at St. Elizabeth. It was a very difficult birth. And this was the doctor that brought her into the world. And at the end of his life, there she was, taking care of him. That's why we are here on this planet, to take care of each other, to be good Samaritans. That wonderful parable ends with Jesus' command, go and do likewise. That's what we're trying to do here for 50 years and for the next 100 years. God bless all of you. Congratulations. Thank you for all that you do. We have listened to God's word and we have reflected upon it. Let us now make our response by praying together our profession of faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, God and not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For our strength and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was encountered of the Virgin Mary in the name of For our sake he was crucified on the conscious fire. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead, and not like the world to come. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My dear friends, let us confidently make known our needs to our Heavenly Father. He always hears our petitions with tenderness and love. For the Church, that we may confront evil in all of its forms through our words and deeds of loving service, so that all may know freedom in Christ in thanksgiving to God for the presence of our Cardinal Archbishop, for the gift of this hospital, and for the 50 years of caring service to the people of this community, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In thanksgiving for the amazing people delivering amazing care in this medical center, for our president and administrators, for all managers, for our medical personnel, the doctors, the nurses, the technicians, and for all the ancillary services, for our chaplains and volunteers, that all be blessed and renewed in their gifts and talents to continue being agents of healing, we pray to the Lord. Lord. For all who are sick, 
for the dying, the addicted, and their families, especially the patients here at Good Samaritan Medical Center, that God's healing presence may be with them all. We pray to the Lord. In thanksgiving for all who founded and built this facility as Cardinal Cushing Hospital, for the Archdiocese of Boston, for Richard Cardinal Cushing and the local Jewish community, for members of the Board of Trustees, past and present, for Dr. John Messersmith, builder of the first medical staff, for all benefactors over the years, to know the rewards of their faith, good works and sacrifices. We pray to the Lord. For all of us, for the Steward Medical Organization, that we may seek God first in our lives, and reach out with compassion and love for our co-workers and all those seeking healing, we pray to the Lord. For all our relatives and friends who have died, for all who have died in this hospital, and for all who have been killed in the tragedies and violence of this world, that they may have the full healing and joy of heaven, we pray to the Lord. And we pause for our own intentions. For these, for all intentions in the prayer basket, for our nation to be cleansed and renewed as a nation under God, for our enemies, and for our benefactors, that the power of the Lord rests upon us all. We pray to the Lord. Lord. And we offer all of these prayers confidently through the intercession of Mary, the mother of the divine shepherd, as together we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace,
sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of our hands. O Lord, we bring to your altar these offerings of our service. Be pleased to receive them, we pray, and transform them into the sacrament of our redemption. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the pastoral mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. <laughs> Together with Francis Alpha, 
and Sean, our bishop, our shepherd, present here with us, former bishops, the clergy, religious, your people everywhere. Remember also all those who have built this hospital, bless us, all the patients here in, in this place, all those who care for the city. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, our loved ones gone before us, and those who have poured out their life's work in this place, all those killed in the violence and tragedies of our times, all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, O Lord, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, our loved ones who are with you already, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Joe, come present, please. For those not familiar with the practice of our chapel for Holy Communion, first of all, if you're not of our faith, which you, we ask that we respect one another's faiths and traditions. Don't, please don't feel any kind of pressure or anything else. It's better to not take part and to pray for all people to come together. But also, we have Holy Communion under both species. And two of us, this Cardinal and myself, will have the, pre the Lord's presence in the host here at the center. And we will have the cup of the precious blood, one to each side. You know, you cannot get sick from drinking the precious blood. You know, the accidents of the, the wine are still there, and a touch of alcohol would kill any germs. Handling the cup is another question. So we do have a sanitizer. There is one right here on this little table and one over by the statue of the Blessed Mother. We ask that you please, if you're gonna take the cup, Please sanitize your hands before you, so we're not picking up anything or passing anything around. And if you take the cup, please take it in both of your own hands. It's only an invitation. If there's any reason you want to do so, medications, whatever, that's perfectly fine. Also, 
when the cup is offered, it's a reminder to bring the sufferings of our life, any of the evil that attacks us, give it to the Lord, that he conquer it through his sufferings, through his cross.
mighty one, immortal Lord. Thank you for your presence, Lord. Touch us, touch us with the power of your healing presence in our mind, body, soul, and spirit, and help us to know how to be with you. Fill us, Lord. Drive out any presence of evil, all that attacks us by your power, Almighty God. Before we have the final blessing, I just wanted to welcome everybody to go to the reception immediately following um, this Mass. What a wonderful Mass it has been, wonderful celebration. I want to thank once again our Cardinal, Cardinal Sean, for being here. <clears throat> I would also like to thank working with Father Kickham. He made it very easy for me in coordinating this Mass. I want to thank the Spiritual Care Department as well as the Marketing Department for helping us put this uh, festivities together. Thank you so much. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May, and and earth. Earth. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is in. Thanks for having me.